Hi, I'd like to welcome you back to Poem Praise 2, and certainly peace be upon you this evening. And our next extraordinary African American is Jesse Jackson, a minister and civil rights leader uh, during the time period of 1941. And this is the information I have on him. America is like a quilt, many patches, many pieces, many colors, many sizes, all woven and held together by a common thread. All of us count and fit somewhere. Jesse Jackson. Now born in Greenville, South Carolina, Jesse Jackson graduated from Sterling High School and received a football scholarship to the University of Illinois. Not long after enrolling there, he transferred to North Carolina Agricultural and Technical College at Greensboro and became active in the sit-in movement. Now after graduating, Jackson entered Chicago Theological Seminary and continued his involvement in the Civil Rights Movement. In 1965, he met Martin Luther King Jr. at the famous Selma March and became a member of the SCLC staff. Returning to Chicago, he began preparing for King's campaign to end slums. Jackson was made head of the Chicago branch of Operation Breadbasket, an organization established by King in 1962. One of his purposes was to expand job opportunities for African Americans. Under Jackson's direction, business that discriminated against blacks were boycotted, a tactic that proved very effective. Now, within a short time, many companies agreed to hire African-American employees, contract with African-American-owned service companies, and utilize African-American-owned banks. Interesting. Now, resigning from SCLC in Operation Breadbasket in 1971, Jackson founded Operation PUSH, People United to Serve Humanity, which aimed at improving the economic status of African Americans. Again, threatening to boycott businesses, Jackson persuaded many national companies such as Burger King to set up African American distributorships and spend millions of dollars advertising in black newspapers and magazines. In 1976, Jackson began Push for Excellence, a program designed to help African American students get a better education. Realizing that economic growth depended on political power, Jackson began touring the country to encourage voter registration. He preached the same message everywhere. Use the power of the ballot box to elect officials who will be sympathetic to the needs of the poor. African Americans in particular. Eventually, Jackson became interested in international affairs, and in 1979, when the hope of establishing dialogue among the Jews, Arabs, Palestinians, and other hostile groups in the Middle East, Jackson traveled to Israel, Lebanon, Egypt, and Syria. He met with Egyptian President Edouard Sadat, I don't know if I said that correctly, so I'm going to spell it, the president's name of um, the Egyptian president name is A-N-W-A-R-S-A-D-A-T. Syrian president 
Hafez al-Assad, which the first name is H-A-F-E-Z, A-L hyphen A, capital A, S-S-A-D, and Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat. Yasser, Y-A-S-S-E-R, and last name A-R-A-F-A-T. Now, in terms of bringing about Arab-Israeli peace, he accomplished little. But in 1984, Jackson was able to draw on his friendship with Ashad to obtain the release of U.S. Navy pilot Robert Goodman, who was taken prisoner after his plane was shot down during U.S. military operations in Lebanon. The same year, Jackson visited Cuba and obtained the release of 22 Americans and 26 Cubans in prison there. The year 1984 was significant for Jesse Jackson for another reason. It was the year he first sought the de Democratic, excuse me, Democratic nomination for President of the United States. An African American presidential campaign was needed. He said to demonstrate to politicians, both Democrats and Republicans, that the concerns of African Americans could not be ignored. Although he was the clear favorite among African Americans, Jackson also needed white votes to win the nomination. He put together what was called the Rainbow Coalition and began addressing the concerns of women, Hispanics, the poor, the handicapped, the young, and anyone else who felt they were being ignored by the other candidates. By the time of the Democratic Convention in San Francisco, Jackson had the support of more than 450 delegates. It wasn't enough to win, but it was impressive. In 1988, Jackson again sought the de Democratic nomination. Previously, many political leaders had scoffed at the idea of a successful African-American presidential candidate. The country was not ready, they said. But Jackson showed them up. He enlarged his base of African-American support while gathering thousands of white votes. Although he didn't win, he came close. In doing so, Jackson forced the country to take the idea of an African-American president seriously and ensured the continuance of African-American political power. After the election, Jackson worked as a special presidential envoy in Africa. In April 1999, he negotiated the release of three U.S. soldiers being held captive by Yugoslav President Slobodan Milosevic. And his name is spelled S-L-O-B-O-D-A-N. Last name, M-I-L-O-S-E-V-I-C. And that is the information I have for you today on Jesse Jackson, uh, extraordinary African-American. Now, our next one coming up is going to be John Robert Lewis, a civil rights leader and a U.S. congressman during the time period of 19. So certainly stay tuned and I'll be coming back to you real soon here on Poem Praise 2. Uh, but while we're away and I'm away from you, certainly be blessed. Okay? All right, y'all. Later, y'all.